right, uh, another acrylic from my holiday in around the Chichester Harbour area of West Sussex. This is a farm near Chidham. It's one of these great lumps of land that sticks out from the main coastline uh, and surrounded on water on three sides, well both sides and then around the, the end. And there's Thorny Island, there's all around Southbourne, Emsworth, it's just gorgeous uh, but flat marshland behind the dike this is and we walked all the way around from Southbourne all the way down round through the uh, peninsula there's uh, several peninsulas and then we walk across here down here cross a bit further over then we walk up to the main road and then this bottom about half a mile or a mile down the road a uh, very very beautiful area but flat lands so the verticals are the trees uh, and we've got this farmstead here this looks like a great big barn barns so just the objects in the landscape so I'm going to do a version of it and it was a lovely day when we went on this particular walk so we've got a lot of corrugated metal roofing here which is sort of grey blue grey I'll put a bit of red on it to show a bit of rust but I'll do a version of it anyway. I'm working, I'll show what I'm working on. Let's uh, just come up to it. This ball, now it's a close up, if you can see that. Uh, it's a bit dull. Um, but you'll see that it's got brush marks on it. I'll go in closer to it, you can have a look. It's a piece of, it's a piece of floor grade hardboard. I'll show you uh, what it looks like. I use a lot of it. Time to time. It's, it's quite a soft hardboard. You put it down before, if a, if a floorboard floor is uneven, you can cover it up with this sort of sort of stuff. It's, a, it's got a machine finished on the other side and a smooth side here, but you rub it down with really cool sandpaper. And I make a homemade gess gesso from some filler. No, I, I've used Plaster Paris, but it goes off a bit quick. But I've got an ordinary filler, like polyfiller, and I mix it with, well, I sprinkle it on the board, and then I get some PVA glue diluted, and I put that on the board, and I mix it all together, and I've got a nice cheap gesso. It's very, very effective. So that is what I'm going to do now. Let's just, but it's a, it's quite small. I don't normally paint this size. It's half the size I normally paint, with the 15 by 11. This is nearer 11 by by seven and a half, something like that, inches that is. Uh, so, I'll put that to one side, I open up my palette, and, uh, well there we are, there it is. The, my Masters and Stay Wet palette, it's an absolute mess at the moment, but that's fine. So we've got vermilion, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt sienna, black, Phthalo green instead of Viridian, mid yellow and lemon yellow. Uh, I'll put some lemon yellow out because I use a lot of it. But I like this mid yellow that I bought three weeks ago at the Art in Action show along with my lovely new sable brush. Kalinsky sable, sable number 14 for £25. Absolute hat to buy. Right, so, uh, I'm not bothering with the ground colour, other than I'll put in, one blue bag, I'll put in some, some, we've got a, we've got a large foreground here, I, I'm going to put in some black and red, I will mix it with a bit of medium, a bit of my knocked up glue, I'll just take the lid off carefully because it's full up. I squeezed it out, it, was in a, it came from a bottle of a litre of the stuff and I you know, got to the end of it. So I just washed it out with a bit of water, which is mixed with the, the glue and I've got a nice acrylic medium. It doesn't extend the drying time, it just allows me to work quickly. Put some more black on the palette. Got my cup of tea. The other one I've just done um, of, the, of the salt marsh, I've called it um, Incoming Tide. Uh, 
near Blossom, West Sussex, Chichester Harbour. That's uploading at the moment, so I'm going to put, put this black and red. I'll show you a bit of it. I'm not going to show you all my mixing because it takes just too long. So that's a red, dark ready black. So let's put it in where the tree, where the tree's going to go. Oh, critical on my screen now. Right, so we've got, <coughs> got this coming all the way down here. Bush. So this gives a nice underpainting for the tree and I can I superimpose yellow and green or greens over there and then we've got a, a background there's a bit of yellow over there so coming across here it's quite high actually the horizon uh, oh, there's all these trees in here I mean, wherever I put in here I'm going to change is have no fear looks so dramatic isn't it? So I'm st I, I never used to paint down to the, the horizon. I used to get my, my sky in first but now I seem to like to paint. It has more impact when you bring the sky down to the edges and go over the edges which is what we will do. I'm painting that dark here I can sort of superimpose the the barns over the top of that and in light and we've got a bit of a pop popper up here just towering away there that's probably a bit big but anyway I'm going to tone it down so let's put in the foreground just rough it in be a light lemony yellowy ochre wheat sort of it's a wheat field or a barley field no, it's us. go over here just keep everything lovely and soft nice and soft and this gesso it, it stops the paint sliding all over the place and it gives you the texture underneath and you can build your gesso up. You can make it thick and thin, um, lumpy, to get whatever surface you want on it. And it all dries qu fairly quickly, so you can carry on working with it. <coughs> now we've got some green coming in there as well. Just a hint of the green. Bit of phthalo, bit of burnt sienna. Waiting for the rain to arrive here today. Cornwall and the West Country are taking a bit of a battering from thunderstorms. It always happens, we get a nice couple of days and then all goes changes. It's because we're on the south. On the, uh, the Gulf Stream. And we got all the weather coming across the Atlantic. Right, now I'm going to put in this red ready black again in the foreground because well we've got this shadow well it's not shadow it's a, a hollow in the ground here and then a bit of bit of medium a bit of medium medium so red dark red As I say, I don't usually paint this small, it's just that I've got this, it's an old photo frame really, but it will, might look quite nice when it's done. So we just put these dark areas in them, then they will be the underpainting for the, the complementary yellows and greens. Oh, we can put a bit of dark in here, a bit of dark green. Bit coming across here. Then we've got all this in between with the weeds where 
probably a tractor's gone. And we can put a bit of light, lighter green in there now. Go over there. It's like a hedge, high hedge. Down to there. And the light is coming from that side. Oh, we just put it on. I'm going to go and reduce us the width of that. It's just a bit too, too now, uh, too thick. Okay, let's just all run the painting there. Right, let's do a bit of sky. Using the one brush. So it's a blue sky. I'm not going to do a pure blue sky. I'll embellish it somewhat. So we'll, we'll put in a bit, a bit of alizarin, just a touch of. Elizabeth, more blue. The uh, ultramarine can be just a little bit insipid, a bit cold, but if you mix a tiny bit of alizarin with it, it sort of warms it up a little bit and kills that intense blue. Well, that's a bit of intense blue, but then my acrylic has quite been on it for a few days now. Around the edges. We'll put a few clouds over there as well. See, that's a nice sort of blue, I reckon. I'll just reduce that a bit. Is it lighter on the horizon? That's the fire engine. Now, a bit of ochre in the sky on the base, perhaps a touch of red as well, just to warm up. Just coming across. Not really rough, isn't it? Right, let's get some impasto on there. Can that some blue under there? That's fun. And just some little ones on the horizon, just wafting across. Go behind the trees. And then we'll put a bit of darker. Oh, it's not that dark. A bit of light red in there. Just to show a bit of. Shadow the other side of those uh, clouds. Bit, bit heavy. Okay. Just one more. summary sky mm, I don't know about that I just want those to blend into the, the sky behind how's that look mm, that's not too bad <coughs> So I want the uh, 
sky light on that, that horizon, which is to enhance the, those trees. Okay, that's about it. Let's do a bit of work on the uh, trees now. <coughs> so we've got the uh, we've got the black in and the red. Now we want the uh, nice, lovely, ready greens. See that gives the foil to the lighter paint. Oh, that's the background there. And I'll have to separate that from that there. So let's get some lighter greens in here. Uh, we're just just catching the lights coming in from there. And we're going, I'm not going to stick with this if I can help out. Just just a few lights on there to separate from the background. Then we've got this grassy bit coming up here. On that shadow. Thistles and tears, wherever they are. Biblical tears. But we've got this green here. Uh, we've got a bit of a bank of uh, nice grasses coming up here. So don't try to paint literally. It has much more impact if you try to be on the impressionist side. We can put a few wildflowers in there, like poppies and stuff. These are little bits of grass and so on. But I'm just using one, this, this brush here, just to catch the highlights. And it's all over here. But by pushing that dark on first, I, I can... It just shows shows up the lights. Well, no portraits, just just in with the in with the colour, lights, darks, and warmer as we come into the foreground. We can put a bit of detail on it, a bit of bigger. Uh, just call this light coloured. All this sort of stuff here. White, whitish yellow, leaves, petals, all sorts of stuff. If you say stuff, it stops giving a name to something and you're just painting what you see then rather than what you think you see. And then, but even for what I do, it's taken me a long time to learn to do all this. And you're getting it all for nothing. Put some more colours in there in a moment to justify the foreground. So, so a bit of, bit of that sienna, burnt sienna there, a bit of white. Let these dry very quickly today. We're waiting for the rain, but it's very close and threatening. Oh, a cup of tea, I forgot my tea. I've got to do a bit of work around this tree, it's just I need to just bring that sky around there a little bit and separate that from that. But that's not a problem, right? A bit, bit of yellow ochre mixed with the white. These are my stalks, wheat stalks just catching the light. Go over that a little bit. Mm. 
nearly white there. But it's not white, it's just waving in the breeze. Oh, just catching that there. And we've got a nice line of very light ochre colour on the top here. Uh, nice and white along there. Almost white. I know a lot of you think that my pictures are calming but I have to tell you that I'm not a calm person. I'm, I think I paint the calm that I'd like to experience and I do experience peace but not, well I'm looking very off really, very up and down. Now let's just put this light in here. <coughs> It's not that colour. Right, okay. I want to do that sky now and get those trees established. I could paint them a bit bluish, a bit of a dark blue, and um, let's try it. A bit of blue, a bit of red, a lot of blue. And probably a bit of yellow, just to just to give it a distance. Behind those uh, barns. Right, well let's, okay, I've, uh, <coughs> right, while well, that's going on, oh, I just want to do that little bit in there, just to establish that shape of that tree, so it's white and red. Really soft. They're probably a bit high, so I think I'm going to come up with my my whitey my whitey bit on the top there. Now with these bristles, because they're worn, I'll get a nice furry edge to my paint. It's not solid. and soft and a bit of green underneath there greeny uh, ochre for the wheat and then that those lovely whitey ochre bits here Bit of bit of green with some stalks coming up in there. Just with a brush, just really this large largest brush. Just not so 
It's a green easel I'm using here. It's a Mabeth box easel that I bought many years ago. I treated myself to a Christmas present. So it was quite a lot of money. I think you get them much cheaper than I paid. I think I was ripped off. But I could afford it in those days. Now I'm poor to stress the answers. Want some? Get some yellowy, warm yellow back in, in here, just to get. I'll put a bit of a bit of white with that, just to lighten it. So it's just as long as the, the small pictures, it does the big one, really. Just catching the light through there, and light here, and light just a few bits of. White light in. and just a few bits there. I could put a bit of sky back in there. Not a lot around there. And lots of pet pet world leaves and white whitey green. Right now, all that with all that green, uh, we need some puppet. Right, let's just pull that up there. Right, uh, that's a hedge, as I said before. Uh, so let's just. Catching the light there. Oh, just glazing over those darker blues with a bit of bit of white or yellow. Just so it's catching the light there. Right, okay, now we can go with just a bit of darkish green in there. Bit indistinct. And then we put the uh, it's a bit of grey along there, and I think it's because it's showing the hedge, the hedge on the top, and the and the stalks of the hedge, the like all the twigs and stuff under there. So I just mix up a a grey, so a bit of white, and red, and blue. Plenty of white on that. A nice bluish fetch colour. Okay, well that's a bit nondescript in it, but right with a with this flat, I'm going to no, I won't use that. I'll use the half inch flat. So with that grey and it's a bit of blue up to me. See it hardens this acrylic, it's plastic, see? No. It doesn't, doesn't stick to plastic, plastic. Come on, squeeze it out. Right, so Nice grey, so I'm going to mix a bit of black with that. But I want a warm grey, so I'll mix a bit of sienna in with it. But I want it light. Okay, so. It's a bit, bit lighter than that. It's quite a big lung barn. That was a tired barn. Uh, it goes into the hedge. Uh, I don't, I don't want that uh, light there. I want the light on the gable end. And that comes. Uh, there's a tree there. That roof comes down quite a way. Oh, 
almost to the uh, ground. Oh, there we got it. I can't arm out. A nice lighter grey. Out to there. And that goes quite a way into another roof. Okay, then there's all sorts of stuff under here. And then there is the shape of that roof. This is the problem I had with the roof on the one I did Saturday. The um, like bottom key, I showed this to houses, the church with the houses, and I guess the roof, because it wasn't obvious in the photograph. Right, okay, so we'll just drag some lighter, warmer lights over that. Show a bit of, bit of, a bit of rust. And Underneath, well, I'm going to put some sky back on top of that because that tr tree that I've got there is is too is too close in in um, tone to the the um, ridge ridge of roofing I'm going to put on the top. So let's just drop that out there. Easy to do that now. Let's just pop it there. It's just too much of that showing above that hedge. Easily rectified, but a quick look. Okay, that's not much of a bit of dark in there. It'll make that look a bit lighter on top of the edge. <coughs> right, so we're going to put that dark along here. Right, so that is merging with. Uh, with that bit there, that same colour, but I will change that. Now I want a bit of, bit of blue, dark, so I'll mix a bit of burnt sienna with black, just to put under, under here. But it's a bit rougher than the way I've got it, let's just show it. Alright, okay. And there seems to be something in front of that, but if I merge that with some of this light colour, yeah, that's lost it. Lost me as well. So let's go back to our greys. Look at that roof coming up there. Oops, getting a bit dry now. A little bit. Okay, so I've, the end of that is catching all the light, so I'm going to put that in with it. just a little bit, bit of ochre and grey. And put a light on there. I have to hunt for your lights, and there's a bit of a sticking out there so we put a bit of a dark it was drying very very quickly now right okay that's all the dark so there's some other bits and pieces in there same sort of grey sort of colour a little bit a little one in there 
not quite as big as that, but anyway, it's in. And in there we've got another barn. Um, I'll, I'll close it up a bit because we're sort of losing it a bit there. We're a bit uh, Bit of light on that side. Uh, just putting what I see. Right, we're, we're nearly done. We've got to do the foreground, but I just want to put some dark. It's all my palette is so dry. Right, just some red, bit of green, bit of black. Just to show this. So there might be at the back of the farm where we bought our eggs. Oh, lovely eggs this So if the lady from the farm flogging the eggs, the children, sees this, I would recommend everybody to go there. So next time I come, I'll get some complimentary eggs. Right, okay, so the oops. Just uh, bring this darker green, the green on the top of the hedge, just just over a bit. Now I'll just put a bit of lighter yellow there, to green, just to right. Well, that's supposed to be a hedge there, but if I if I bring that uh, wheat up even more. Touch of yellow in it. So let's just get that in there. It's too hard. I like my edges to be. I can't quite do it on there, but uh, that's going down a little bit there. Not me, really. Nice on the top, that one. Well, it's there, so let's put it in. Let's put it in, in red, light red. Right, now the grey. I'm having to shortcut the grey with the with the white, oh, uh, white and black. That's it. That's like a gable. It's it, it's in the uh, on the roof there. The roof's all coming down that way. That's a bit too hard for me to show. I think. Oh, just you know, it's that corner there. Oh, that do. It's a demonstration, isn't it? After all. Now there's a, some windows or gates, doors, something there. Right. Let's do the flowers now. Um, use that brush. So we're putting we're putting the. Uh, I think the word for it is ubiquitous. Poppies, just 
just along here, just a little bit. Not to overdo it like that. But big ones, little ones. And then we can do the blue ones in there. Just blue and white. Little corny flowers and stuff. And there's some little bits of white. Corny, isn't it? English expression of that means naff. Obvious. Okay. Now some beautiful yellows. Bit of white. Put it in a frame in a minute. And all we need to do is a couple of birds. Some little bits of some white, just just some sort of stalks here, more yellow than anything. Okay, birds. Do we need birds? Yeah, go on. Need plenty of water. And we'll sign it with a bit of white paint, I think. I have dated a couple of these, maybe because of holiday, but really don't date your paintings. Because if in 10 years time somebody likes it, looks at it, they think, well it's 10 years old, why haven't you managed to sell it in 10 years? So for that reason, don't date your pictures. <laughs> Pretend you did them yesterday. It's a sort of nice little picture, isn't it? You know, I say so myself. Right, let's uh, zoom in on it. <coughs> right, we're going. There's my barn. Oops, all those build little barns. They're all in the photograph. That's my tree. You don't have to stipple everything. And that is going off into the distance. That's my hedge. Go in front of that barn. Let's go into the foreground now. The overdone poppies, or any indication of poppies anyway. Okay, I'll show you what I copied again. I'll keep an eye on that. There's my, there's my view. See that? Whoops. Now you see it, now you don't. Right, thanks for watching, that's all I'm doing today. See you soon, bye bye.